Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits, for he has cleansed us from all our iniquities. He has healed us from all our diseases. He has saved us and redeemed us from all destruction. He has crowned our heads with his loving kindness and tender mercies. He has filled our mouths with good things so that our youth may be renewed like the eagles. Blessed be the name of the Lord who was and is and is to come. Blessed be the name of our Jesus Christ who will never change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. His loving kindness is so rich. His lips are drenched with favor. And when he speaks to you, he speaks in love. This is the good news, the good tidings of our Bible that you are loved. You are the beloved of Jesus Christ. And no matter where you are and what you've done, he loves you and he cares for you. We're going to go to the book of Mark today. And we're going to go to chapter 16. Chapter 16, verses 8, uh, verses 9 through 10, actually. Chapter 16, verses 9 through 10. This is when Jesus Christ has risen from the dead on the third day. It's Sunday. It's it's now a brand new day, a brand new life. Life. And, and here's what the disciples and all those followers are going to see. Now, when he rose early on the first day of the week, Sunday, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast out seven demons. This is amazing to me. You may say, what's the big deal? So he appeared to Mary Magdalene. My, my friends, my beloved, my loved ones, this is a woman you're talking about. In those days, 2,000 years ago, whether it was in the Greek world or whether it was in the Jewish world, women were not first-class citizens. They were not even second, third-class citizens. They were not honored. In fact, if there was a murder or crime and there was a woman there who witnessed it, the woman could not come to court because their word were not would not be believed or accepted as a true witness. So this is amazing that in that era, during that time, Jesus would appear to a woman. You, you would think if you want to make the Bible look really good, he would appear to Pilate. Pilate who may be sleeping at this time. And Jesus would come to Pilate and say, how you doing Pilate? Uh, you want to see my scars? You want to see the nails that they poured through? You want to see my feet? Do you want to see my side? Do you want to see the truth? Because you ask, what is the truth? I am the truth. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I wanted you to know. I wanted you to see. I wanted you to witness. No. He didn't go to Pilate. He didn't go to Herod. He didn't go to the Sadducees, to the Pharisees. He didn't go to Caiaphas. Caiaphas. You tore your clothing and you yelled out blasphemy that you said that I could not be the son of God. Here I am. I have risen from the dead. I have conquered death. I have conquered Hades. I have conquered hell. I have made a public spectacle of Satan and all his demons who have no power to, of all my followers, they have no power over them. I have made you a public spectacle, Satan and all this... He could have come to Caiaphas and he could have said, look at me, look at what you have done. No. He could have gone to the disciples first. He could have gone to the unbelievers first. But he goes to Mary Magdalene, who had seven demons that he had already cast out. This is beautiful news for you and me because Jesus goes to the lowly. Jesus comes to the humble. Jesus comes to those who are childlike, not childish, but childlike, who have childlike faith. And, and you can we can turn to Galatians chapter 3 to find out who really... We we are in Jesus Christ and who he goes to. Galatians chapter 3 and we're going to go to verse 28. Galatians chapter 3. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are uh, if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. 
So Jesus didn't look at her, Mary Magdalene, oh, you had seven demons, oh, you're a woman, oh, you're not respected. Jesus like, I, I come to you. I come to the lowly. I come to the humble. I come to those who are willing to kneel before me. So Jesus comes to Mary Magdalene. And I want you to know today that Jesus comes to you because he literally, wholeheartedly loves you. And that's the truth because that's the good news of the Bible. So Jesus comes to Mary Magdalene and then she's going to go and tell all the disciples. But in order to find out what the encounter was like, we need to turn to John, John chapter 20. So we're going to go to the book of John to just to see what happened during this encounter when Jesus actually talked to Mary. And it says in John chapter 20, verse 11, but Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping. So she had come with the other uh, Mary and as she had come with other ladies at the beginning. They were going to anoint Jesus with spices and, and then they, the tomb was empty. They run back to the disciples. They try to tell him she somehow lingers or comes back and she wants to see herself. She wants to see and she's there. She's at the tomb. She's weeping and she stoops down and she looks in the tomb just to see what she can see. And she saw two angels in white sitting on one at the head and the other at the feet where Jesus' body had lain. So this is like a beautiful picture of the Old Testament with the Ark of the Covenant that was in the Holy of Holies where two angels sat on the mercy seat. And, and the mercy seat was where the blood was sprinkled. The blood of, of, of lambs were sprinkled so that God would look from above and accept the blood and he would accept the blood and he would therefore cover the sins of the people of Israel. Well, this is a picture of the mercy seat where Jesus was in the tomb and he is the mercy seat. He was the propitiation in this is love in John, 1 John 4.10. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and that he sent his only son as a propitiation for our sin, as the mercy seat where the blood is spilled and Jesus was on Calvary Street spilling his blood. He's not in the tomb, but that represents the mercy seat where the two angels sit and where the blood of the lamb was. And that is a mercy seat. You, you know, this I call to mind in Lamentations 3.21. And therefore I have hope. If you don't have hope, call this to mind. That we are not consumed because of God's great mercies. Mercy seat where the blood is spilled. Because of his mercies, we are not consumed. For his compassions never, never, never fail. His compassion for you never fails. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. They are new every morning just for you. When you're down and lonely and depressed and oppressed and you feel like giving up, when your body's breaking down, his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. So she, this is what she sees. She's, she's actually seeing what the Old Testament had presented that the New Testament would have. Jesus Christ, our, our, he, is, he is the mercy seed. He is the one that spilled the blood so that not only can he cover our sins like, like they did in the Old Testament, but cleanse us of all our sins. No guilt as far as the east is from the west, so has our sins been removed from us. There is no guilt, no guilt, no guilt. That's in Psalm 103, 12. And she saw the two angels in white sitting at the head. Then they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, because they have taken away my Lord. And I don't know where they've taken him, where they have laid him. And she's like, somebody's taken my Lord. I, I need to know where he is. Now, when she had said this, she turned around and she saw Jesus standing there. Now, she doesn't know it's Jesus. I believe she turned around where the opening of the cave was. So the sunlight is coming in. She's crying. She can't really see. She sees a figure. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? 
She still doesn't know it's Jesus Christ talking to her. She's supposing him to be the gardener. She said, sir, if, if, you, if you've carried him away, tell, tell me where you've laid him and I'll take him away. She's like, please tell me, please tell me. This is my Jesus. He, he loved me. He forgave me. He cast out all the demons out of me. He gave me a second chance. He gave me new life. Please tell me that. Let me go and get him. Don't, don't hide him from me. And Jesus says, one of the most beautiful words ever spoken in the Bible. And you're like, what, what did he say? How, how did he say it? What, what happened? This is, to me, I, I stop and I freeze and I, I bask in the love of Jesus Christ when I hear this because it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful what he said and how he said it. Jesus said to her. It's only one word. Just one word. Jesus said to her, Mary. And you think, what's the big deal of, of, of calling somebody's name? He didn't just say Mary. When he said Mary, he's saying, Mary, I love you. Mary, I adore you. Mary, you're my beloved. Mary, you belong to me. Mary, I will never leave you. Mary, I will never forsake you. Mary, I will always walk with you. Mary, I will strengthen you. Mary, I will help you. Mary, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Mary, I died for you. Mary, I have cleansed you. Mary, forget the former things. Don't think about the past. See, Mary, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. I'm making a way in the desert for you, Mary. I'm making springs in the wasteland for you, Mary. Mary, 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 come to me. Come to me, those you who are weary, and I will give you rest and salvation and cleansing of your sins, and healing of your wounds, and healing of your impression, oppressions, and healing from all your diseases. Mary, Mary, Mary. That's what Jesus said. And that's what Jesus says to you. No matter who you are, no matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, no matter what you've said, no matter what the crime, he calls your name. And he stretches out his arms, his hands that have the nail scars, and he calls your name. And he wants to gather you in his hands and keep you close to his bosom. Why don't you come today? She turned and said to him, Rabboni, which means teacher, she knew who it was. See, she didn't know before, but when he called her name with compassion, with love, with goodness, with favor and mercy, she knew exactly who he was. Rabboni, Jesus said, don't cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. Look how beautiful, look how personal Jesus is. It's not like, oh, oh God in the heavens, uh, how will it be thy name? Uh, and if you hear me, uh, I'm begging you. No, it's like Abba, Papa, Father. It's my Papa. It's my Father. She's like, it's my Father and your Father, Mary. It's my God and your God. Come to him. He will never forsake you. It's Abba, Father, I come as I am. Don't be scared of him. He loves you. It, we fear God, not in a way of trembling, but in a way of reverence and awe and thankfulness that he loves us so much. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples what she had seen, that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. How was their response, by the way? We go back to the book of Mark, back to uh, chapter 16, and we go back to verse 9. She went and told those who had been with him, the disciples, the eleven. Of course, Judas is dead. He killed himself as they mourned and wept. And, then, and when they heard... That, she, that Jesus was alive, and that she had seen him, Mary Magdalene had seen him, they, they did not believe. Ah, wow. 
they did not believe. And Jesus had talked to them about their unbelief. Uh, you know, Jesus, Thomas said to him, Lord, show us the way in John 14. We don't know the way. And Jesus said, Thomas, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. That's what Jesus said. Those who come to the Father can only come to the Father just through me, Jesus Christ. There is no other way. There is no other journey. There is no other path. It's just Jesus Christ. So as you come as you are today and say, wow, I, I, I've done so many rotten things. I, I've, I've said so many rotten things. I'm a rotten man. I'm a rotten woman. I, I, I can't even stand myself. People can't stand me. I, I don't know what I'm doing in life. I've, I, and you may have reached the mountaintops and said, I've conquered everything. I've got everything I've ever wanted, yet I still feel empty. Either way, whether you're on the valley and the lows of the lows and you may actually despise yourself or whether you're on the high of the highs and people actually worship you and, and are afraid of you and you've conquered all. No matter where you are in life, on the low, on the top, or in the middle, you need a Savior. You need Jesus Christ because we are body, soul, and spirit. And without Jesus Christ, your spirit is completely dead. And when Jesus comes into your life, your spirit will come to life because the Holy Spirit will come into you. So today, wherever you are, whatever you've done, Jesus comes to you. And you may be in a cave, in the tomb. And you're like, this life does not look good. It looks empty. It's cold. It's harsh. I'm hurting. I don't know what to do. I'm confused. Jesus comes to you and he calls out your name. And he doesn't call out your name saying, I'm going to get you and I'm going to fix you and I'm going to, I'm going to punish you. No, all the punishment was thrown on him. The wrath of God was thrown on Jesus Christ on the cross. He's not here to punish you. He's here to love you, accept you and honor you. So as you are in the tomb, in the tomb of your oppression, depression, hardship, sickness, sins, let us all come as we are and let us hear Jesus call out our name. Remember, his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. And therefore, we are not consumed, it says in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 21 and onward. We are not consumed. Why? Because of his mercies. He is the mercy seat. The blood was spilled on him. He spilled the blood. And because of his mercy, we are not going to get what we deserve. He got it. He got the death. He got the wrath of God. He got all our, sickness, all our sicknesses. We get the healing. We get salvation. We get his goodness. We get his mercy. And we get his favor. There's nobody in this whole wide world, whether it's in the past or in the present or the future, can ever give you that hope. There's nobody that could give you that goodness. There's nobody that could give you that favor except Jesus Christ. Remember, all religions try to climb up and please God. They're God. But in this world of Christianity and the Bible that we read, God came down to us knowing that we couldn't come up to him. And he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross. And if you know that you are a sinner, and you're like, I can't, I can't take this anymore. I, I, can't, I can't do this anymore. Come to him. And if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and God raised him from the dead, then you and I are saved. It's that simple. It is that simple. You don't have to do and work and work. Jesus did the work for you. You don't have to work. So come to him as you are today and say, Lord God, I... I come as I am. I'm in the tomb. I'm, I'm, it's, this is cold place. My life is cold. My life is dark. My life is lonely. My life is hardship. My life is just breaking me down. My body's broken. My mind is broken. My soul is broken. My spirit is dead. I, I'm coming to you as I am. And I'm hearing you call my name. And I'm hearing it called out in compassion and not in wrath. And so here, here I am. As I am, I come to you. I, I give you my life. I give you my sins. I give you everything that I've done. And I lay it at the cross. And I, 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 I now I can see and I can, I, I, it's real to me that the blood of Jesus is cleansing me of all my sins. And, and, and it's everything in the past is in the past. And my guilt is in the past. Everything is in the past. 
and I'm made whole, I'm made new, I, I come to you. I come to you as I am. I come to you as I am. And I'm cleansed underneath the blood of the Lamb. And I know right now that I am accepted by my God and I accept it by my Jesus. And now the Holy Spirit has come into my spirit and I am alive. I am alive for the first time in my life. And you took those stripes for me, Jesus. You took those stripes in the back, 40 minus 1, 39. You took those. You didn't need to take that. But by your stripes, I'm healed. My body's broken. I'm sick. I'm lonely. I'm my mind, my heart. It may be cancer you're dealing with. It may be arthritis. It may be Parkinson's. It may be Alzheimer's. It may be a tumor. It may be a brain disease. It may be whatever it might be, lung disease, fibrosis, uh, stomach disease, ileus. It, it may be whatever it might be. Jesus comes to you and he just touches you. And by that touch, by his stripes, I proclaim you are healed. Because salvation is not only to save us from our sins, but salvation is also to heal us of all our diseases. Yes, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, for he has cleansed me of all my sins, and he has healed me of all my diseases and illnesses. He has redeemed me from destruction. He has crowned my, my head with his loving kindness and tender mercies. He has filled my mouth with good things so that my youth may be renewed like the eagles. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.